Yes, hi, it's Loz. I thought I'd go live again today just to catch the Aussies that might be home. I know it's nine o'clock Sydney time and 6 a.m. on the West Coast where I am, where no one else is because it's the arse end of the world. So, have you been following some of my videos? Oh, what's happened to my lips? Have you been following some of my manifesting videos? If you have and you have any questions for me, please put them in the chat because we can manifest live together and I can answer any of your questions you might have about manifesting. Hi, Jackie. Hi. So I just popped on very randomly. I'm just going to pop on a few times this weekend just to try and ascertain what are the best times to go live because this is today's the first day I've ever gone live and I went live at 9 p.m. EST, New York time, and then a couple of hours later for um, the people in um, other places. <laughs> and then now some of the Australians are probably popping off to bed. Um, so I thought I'd pop on for the Aussies because I'm Australian. <laughs> And I now live back in Australia, even though I didn't live here for an awfully long time. Hi, guys. Hi, Australian Egg Tube. How are you? I don't know what that is. That sounds fascinating. So I am a new TikToker. I only joined last week. And I set up an account purely about manifesting because I was so alarmed at the crap being taught on here. Um, I was just going to do affirmation videos. Um, because lots of people ask me for those in the manifesting groups I've joined on Facebook because I listen to them on my voice memos and I'm a voiceover artist and I, they sound quite nice and people ask me for them so I thought I'd put them on TikTok and then I came on here and realised all the LOA shit you guys are being taught about talking to water and crystals and candles and a whole lot of crap. Um, so I thought I'd get on here and talk about the law of assumption and using your subconscious mind to manifest which is all manifestation is. Mind power. That's it. Um, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, otherwise, I'll just crap on about manifesting. Um, if you have any manifestation questions, just ask them in the chat. Um, so I base all of my learning and what I relay to people on Neville Goddard and that's him there. That's the Neville Reader. That's all his books. Oh, not all of them, most of them. And uh, Florence Scovel Shin, Joseph Murphy, who was taught by the same guy uh, Neville was taught by, called Abdullah, who was a Jewish rabbi. A Jewish rabbi. An Egyptian rabbi. Of course he was Jewish, he was a rabbi. An, an Ethiopian rabbi uh, back in the 20s. And he was amazing. And he taught Neville that the Bible is about creation. The Bible is about manifesting and it teaches you how to create your own life. That is the point of the Bible, he said. So he taught Neville how to, and I'm not religious, so I'm not talking about this as a religious thing. I'm talking about this as a understanding the meaning of the book kind of thing. So in that book it says, as, with, as within, so without. You are all gods. Um, believe you have received it and you will. These are all things that tell you that uh, you can manifest. It's crazy. If you go through the Bible, you'll realize the entire book is about that. Um, so that's what Neville bases his teachings on. And he teaches you that you first need to change yourself and then you can change your circumstances, that your circumstances are based purely on your mind and what's going on in your mind. And that is the law of assumption. As you assume, so you manifest. So whatever you assume about you, you feel about you, you believe about you will be reflected to others and back to you by others okay so if you think you're not good enough that's how people will treat you if you feel like relationships never work out for you they won't work out for you whatever your beliefs and assumptions are will be reflected back by people and situations so your situations will stay the same because your thinking about the situations stays the same and unless you change it nothing will change so there's lots and lots of talk on here about candles and water and fucking vibration and shit um, that's all hooey as far as I'm concerned because of what I've learned and what I've discovered and what I've experienced over the years that it's all the power of your subconscious mind and that is what manifests into the outside world. And you'll know this by thinking of all the coincidences you've experienced, all the deja vu you've experienced and all the luck you think you've experienced. That's all you manifesting shit for yourself. Okay, and if you don't believe me, write a little manifestation journal for the next week of all the things you manifest, the good and the bad, because it's not just good stuff, and you'll start realizing how fucking powerful you are. Okay, hi guys, hi, ask me any manifestation questions in the chat, please. So, I basically went through the law of attraction, learned, you know, read the secret, read the power, read 
the gratitude book, or whatever Rhonda Byrne had, read all that secret shit, then read um, Abraham Hicks, even though she's a fucking nut, um, and then who else did I read? Oh, everything, Napoleon Hill, Bob Proctor, I've listened to every single one of their lectures, everything, everything. Napoleon Hill is probably the closest to Law of Assumption because he talks about infinite intelligence, but I studied every self-help book and every manifestation book you can think of, I've read the fucking thing. Okay, um, so then I came across Neville and I was like, who is this dude banging on about the Bible? And it really threw me at first because he talks about the Bible and I wasn't religious and I was just like, I don't know if I can handle this, but everyone had said, that is the book to read. It's called Feeling is the Secret. Read that book, read that book. So I read it and I was like, is he talking about feelings or he's talking? And I didn't get it at first. And then I realized he's not talking about feelings which is what everyone's teaching on here that you need to feel feelings to manifest he's talking about the feeling of it is done the feeling of completion the feeling of thinking you have it already that feeling and that is what creates what you want okay because if you think about your shitty thoughts you think those already so the sh shitty thoughts that you have your negative thoughts you assume that's who you are and that's what manifests so you literally have got to reprogram your subconscious to outpicture new realities because you, you're in your own reality, everyone else is in theirs, and in your reality, the only thing that outpictures is your thoughts. Have you manifested people back in your life under circumstance, under any circumstances? Oh, yes. So, well, circumstances don't matter. So, um, God, I've manifested back, and well, I got back together with an ex who lived in a different country than me. So, when I got back to Australia, we reunited after six years. But that didn't work out. Then I met someone new. But the first one, the first SP came back while I was with the someone new. The someone new, I manifested after I broke up with that guy. Uh, that day I said, I want someone who treats me beautifully. I just want someone who treats me beautifully. And I wasn't even into affirmations back then. I was just saying it. Okay. And I said it with conviction. Like, that's what I want. Because that guy treated me like shit. And I was like, nah. I do not want anyone like this again. I want someone who treats me beautifully. And I didn't mean the other guy. I meant someone new. And I also said, and someone who walks up the street with me with my dog and my cat because that guy didn't like my dog and cat. And I was like, whoever this is has to like my dog and cat. They were my two prerequisites. The next week, I um, heard a lawnmower outside my window at quarter to six in the morning, quarter to seven in the morning. And I jumped out of bed because, now this is a bridge of incidents, on the 1st of January, I had a fight with my best friend when that other dude was there. She didn't like the other dude or she didn't like that he was there. She had given me a plant and I accidentally killed it just around this time. And I felt so guilty because of the fight we'd had and that I killed this plant. I decided to learn how to water plants. I thought it can't be that fucking hard to water a plant. So I decided to watch all these YouTube videos about how to water plants. And then I suddenly got into plants because I realized I knew how to do it. And I had all these plants. As you can see, I got really into plants. I got obsessed with plants. I started buying all these indoor plants, watching all these YouTube videos about plants. And then it got to about three weeks in and I decided I'm going to build a market garden because the back of my garden was used to be a market garden and had been ripped out by the person who ripped it out was this person I ended up meeting. So it's a strange connection. Anyway, so I had discovered that the best way to fill up the yard without needing soil was lawn clippings. So this morning I heard a lawnmower outside my door on the other side of the road, kind of diagonally opposite to my house. And there was a lawnmower truck there. So I raced out of bed in my dressing gown, threw my dressing gown on at quarter to seven in the morning, raced over to the truck and said, uh, who, who owns this truck? And this guy came out and he was cute. And I was like, oh, hi, um, can I have these lawn clippings when you're done? And he's like, yeah, sure. Where do you live? And I said, I live over there. He goes, oh, I pulled out the garden at the back there. So he pulled out the garden that I was putting in, which is really, really strange. And the only reason he did that was he was across the road mowing the lawn and the original owners of the house had asked him to do it for them because they'd seen him across the road. Anyway, so we got chatting and I said, oh, the haunted, it's haunted that house. The lady rings a doorbell all the time. And he was like, oh, my grandma used to ring the doorbell in my granddad's house when, oh no, granddad used to ring my grandma's doorbell when he died. And I was like, oh, so he didn't think I was a nut because we're talking about doorbells being rung by ghosts. Anyway, and uh, so he came, brought the lawn clippings and then he just kept coming back. And the next week he came back and the next week he came back and that was my SP. So I literally manifested a guy to turn up outside my house, outside my house. Um, 
So circumstances do not matter. They can literally just turn up outside your house. Then the old SP, a month to the day that I had got together with the new SP, the old SP came back, decided to want me back, and I was like, I don't want you now. And then he would not go away, and he started conforming into exactly the person I'd wanted him to be the year before and um, was telling me everything I'd wanted to hear a year before, but it was a bit fucking late. And he word for word said stuff I wanted him to say, like, there's no girl in the whole world like you, you're so unique. He actually said these things. He threw in some extra shit on top, like, you're so vivacious or whatever the fuck he said. Anyway, and I was like, tough, dude, like, I'm sorry. And this guy would not go away. So he tried everything. And then eventually, after about seven months, he said, you're never going to leave him, are you? And I said, no. Um, so that's the... I suppose the two conscious kind of relationships I had where I was doing it on purpose, where I wanted the other guy back at some point and he came back and then manifested my SP to literally turn up outside my house. Um, yeah. Uh, have you manifested? Blah, 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 blah. When I manifest X, I should just pretend we're already together, just affirm. So the pretending you're already together, it's not really pretending. I mean, I guess it is. It's kind of make believe. But it's really just living in the end. I know this sounds strange, me saying it's not pretend. I mean, it's not pretending in the outside world like you would playtime as a child, actively, you know, pretending you're in a kitchen when there's nothing there and it's just some mud and some bowls. I'm saying you do it in your mind. So what Neville Goddard talks about, if anyone wants to be married, he said, ladies, if you wish to be married, imagine a ring on the ring finger of your hand. Imagine it. He doesn't say put it on your finger and walk around like a lunatic when you're single. He means imagine it's there, go to sleep with it there. When you look at your hands, see it in your mind there, okay? You don't actually put it there, okay? Because he talked about how his wife did that and then she met him. You assume the feeling of being married. You assume the feeling of being coupled. Oh, and the person before, actually, and the person that I was with before the ex-boyfriend, I manifested him, actually, I realise now, by going to sleep every night with someone in my bed. So I would go to sleep imagining there was someone there and then this guy turned up and what I wrote in my journal, this guy was everything I'd written in the journal except I forgot to write, not a fucking lunatic because um, this guy was a narcissistic asshole. Anyway, but that's also because um, he was just reflecting my thoughts. So probably if I met him now, he'd be fine. I didn't know that at the time. I thought he was a narcissist, but as we know, you can change people because they're just reflecting you. Um... When I manifest, I just pretend we're already together. So, yes. So, the pretending, the living in the end, is literally just being in the end in your mind. Living there in your mind as if you're already together. So, you don't let the 3D throw you away from the thoughts in your mind that you are together. So, when you're affirming and you're saying we are in a happy, loving relationship, in your mind you are, even though the 3D doesn't reflect that. Does that make sense? I know it seems like I'm saying pretend, but really it's pretending in your mind. Does that make sense? Any more questions? Has anyone got any more questions? So I just jumped on here, guys, just to see how many people would be on in this time slot if I ever went live at this time of time of night because it's uh, 6 o'clock where I am, p.m., and it's 9 p.m. in Sydney, so I just wanted to catch some Aussies um, because a lot of my viewers are, well, 45% apparently of my viewers are all in the U.S. So, guys, do you have any um, manifested questions? Okay, and what can I do to not think about how much time it's taking, like it's seven months after the breakup. Ah, okay. Time is an illusion, and the more you think about how long it's taking, the more time it will take. Seriously. Stop thinking about the time. Now, if it's been seven months and you still haven't manifested him back, you're doing something wrong. And I don't mean this to be rude. I just mean something's gone awry. And it's probably because you haven't got rid of your old story about you or him. So you haven't worked on self-concept enough. You haven't built yourself up enough and put yourself on the pedestal and got rid of all your negative shit that caused the situation in the first place in your mind and you're concentrating too much obsessively on him and not, or her, and not concentrating on changing you. Changing you is the most important thing. Build yourself up. Do some self-concept affirmations such as, I am a queen and I am treated like a queen. I am beautiful and everyone treats me beautifully. I am loved and everyone loves me. When I walk in a room, people take notice. When I speak, people listen. Whatever your 
problems are that you have inside yourself that you're not confident enough. So when you walk in a room, everyone takes notice. When you talk, people listen. If you feel muted or you feel like people don't listen to you, whatever your negative thoughts are, investigate. Have an uncritical investigation of self, as Neville would say, and look at what your negative shit is and affirm against that and really concentrate on that. And I'm telling you right now, if you really concentrate just on you and not even on your SP for a month, shit will change quick. Um, can you manifest revised changing a date of birth? No, people keep asking me this. I think that's not possible. However, people might tell you this, but you could revise it on your passport, on your driver's license or on your birth certificate. So you could imagine you've lost your passport and you get it back and then it's changed. But actually changing when you're born, it's like saying, can I bring someone back from the dead? They did. Um, thanks for your answer. That's all right. So I don't know. Revising the city would be the same thing. So I don't know why you're so against where you're born and what year you're born. What's the problem with it? Is there an issue? What's the issue? Maybe just get rid of the issue. I don't know why you would have such an issue with it unless you don't like your age and you don't like your country. So why don't you affirm that you live somewhere else? And if you're worried about feeling old, then just affirm that you look youthful. Okay, there's different ways of doing this, guys, without having to change your whole fucking history. Okay, there's ways of doing this. If you want to live in a different country, just affirm that you live somewhere else. I love living in Guatemala. Guatemala is amazing. Whatever it is, wherever you want to live, change, do an affirmation about that. Any more questions, guys? So, um, Basically, I'm going to come on randomly during the week this week just to establish what times people are on. But also, I definitely go live every Thursday night, US time, 9 p.m. EST, and Sunday night, 6 p.m. EST, US time. Manifestation, when we do it right, always works. Yes, because it literally cannot not. The law of assumption is absolute. It is a spiritual law. Your subconscious mind was built to do two things. Have an imagination, okay, and create your reality oh, and also run your body, okay? But it's, it's maybe that's not the only purposes, but in my mind they are. Your imagination is more important than knowledge. Albert Einstein says that, and he's a scientist, the greatest scientist of all time, tells you that your imagination is more important than the knowledge you acquire. Now, why would he say that? Because he knew that every time he was thinking of inventions, every time he was thinking of equations, his thought processes outpictured into inventions and equations. He knew that thinking and thinking and thinking and going into his subconscious mind and trying to figure things out and letting his subconscious do the work for him worked for him. Okay? That's where your power is. That's where your power is to manifest the outside world. You've done it your whole life. And if you look at your life, You'll realize your subconscious thoughts have outpictured into your life. If you thought you weren't good enough, people treated you like shit. If you thought you weren't beautiful, people always made comments about your looks. If you thought you were never successful, people always asked you about, oh, when are you going to, you know, blah, blah, blah. Or if you had a paranoia about not having children, people constantly ask you about that. Aren't you going to have kids? Don't you want kids? Whatever your thoughts are, people will outpicture, and especially your negative ones, because they're real strong and they're dominant and they're in your mind. If you sat down and really wrote down for a day all the shitty thoughts you have, you'd feel sick, as Neville says. If you actually assessed, if you went inside your conscious, your unconsciousness and thought, what do I think all day? And you wrote it down, you'd feel sick at what you say to yourself. Because they are reflections of what your parents said, what your teachers said, what people in authority have said, what people in your childhood said to you, what you saw, what was modelled for you. So if your parents had a really shitty relationship and they yelled and screamed like my parents did, your relationship model was shit. If you watched people struggling with money, your model for money was shit. And that is kept in your subconscious mind for the rest of your goddamn life until you change it. And until you change it, it's out picture for you, which is why a lot of poor people stay poor. A lot of people who come from divorced parents end up getting divorced, okay? Because it's literally what's in their subconscious and they don't even realize it's running there. Can I manifest confidence? Absolutely. Oh, g'day. Someone's in Australia. Um, can I manifest confidence? Absolutely. You can rampage confidence. You can say things like, I am the baddest bitch no one is like me. No one fucking compares to me. 
No motherfucker on earth is as good as me, as beautiful as me, as confident as me. When I walk in a room, everyone looks at me. When I talk, everyone hangs on my every word. I am the greatest motherfucker. Think about how Muhammad Ali used to talk about himself. I am the greatest alive. I'm the blah. I'm the blah. I'm the this. I'm the that. That's how you've got to talk to yourself, guys. I don't care if you're rampaging when you're walking around doing exercise or in the car or in the shower. Do it. And do it out loud if it makes a difference. Do it to the mirror. Look yourself in the eye and do it in the mirror. That's really powerful because you're fucking looking right at yourself. Build yourself up. It's the greatest thing you can do. Because all I know is this about successful people in my life, people I've known who have become very successful. They have had enormous self-belief. They don't let anyone stop them from what they believe they are if they want to be famous and i know quite a few people have become famous like rebel wilson people like that they just did not let people tell them no they were just like whatever next i'm gonna be fucking famous i don't care what you say and they don't say that to the person's face they're just thinking it in their mind because in their mind they're already fucking famous they want to be famous they've got a point to prove people like rebel have got a point to prove okay so What's going on? What's going on? I'm just doing a live about manifesting. Ask me any manifestation questions. So, time, it doesn't matter when I manifest. I just have to put myself first and affirm he loves me. Yes. So, time doesn't matter. Put yourself first. Now, when I say put yourself first, I really mean this. Okay. How do I say your name, Emily? I really mean this. Your concept of yourself is what is out pictured in your world. If you think you are not lovable, people will reflect that and will not love you back. If you think you were not chosen and you're not a priority, people won't treat you as a priority. You've got to figure out what those shitty negative thoughts are you've got and change them. That is your self-concept, what you feel and believe about yourself. It's not self-love. That's like, oh, I love myself and pampering yourself and going getting a facial, that's self-care. I'm talking about who do you think and believe you are? Are you the girl who never gets chosen? Are you the girl who's picked last? Are you the girl who um, your parents, you weren't the favourite child? What is your thing? What are your things that you have? Change those. Work on those. Make up affirmations against those, the opposite of that shit that you think. Really, really work on you. And suddenly, honestly, when I started working on my self-concept, and it was only recently, it really changed everything for me because I started realizing all my problems with relationships especially, but also career were all based on my opinion of me, what I thought I was in the world. Once I changed that, everything around you changes. What's the best outcome from your manifesting? You mean personally for me? Oh, lots of shit. I was talking in the last live about manifesting living in this house when there were no other rentals around um manifesting my brand new car I got recently even though I thought I was only buying a second hand one and I couldn't get any credit um manifesting my SP manifesting my ex back even though I didn't want him um what else manifesting getting into drama school when I was told no um manifesting the house I own in England uh lots of shit um what's the best uh, how can I manifest for my mum to win the lottery I want to move house so bad okay if you want to move house, you don't have to win the lottery to do it. A lot of people think that winning the lottery or going to the casino and winning money is the only way they can get the money. You've just got to assume you're wealthy and you have the money. It doesn't matter how it comes about. What if a relative died and left you $100,000? Would you be annoyed that it wasn't lottery money? Would you say, oh, sorry, I'm not going to accept that hundred grand because I'm waiting on lottery money? You just want the money. In fact, what you really want go to the end, is the new house. So guys, don't worry about the how. The money is the how. If the thing is the house, affirm for the house. Visualize the house. You now live in that house. If you have an idea of what that house looks like for your mum, uh, manifest my mum to win the lottery. I want to move house so bad. So wherever you want to live, the area, what the house looks like, imagine it. Visualize that you live there when you're in your current house. Imagine someone, you telling someone about how you've moved house and how amazing this new house is. Imagine your friend walking in the house and saying, oh my God, this house is beautiful. How did you guys afford this? Okay, you can do things like telephone technique. Someone on the phone going, oh my God, I can't believe you got that house in that area. How did you do that? 
Okay, you can imagine people talking to you, talking to you on the phone, their faces when they see your house. That's visualization. You can imagine seeing your house when you're in your current house. Imagine your where you are now is there. Okay. You can say things like, I remember when we used to live in that shitty house. God, that house was shit. I remember when we were struggling for money to pay the mortgage and now we pay it so easily. That's a technique that Neville uses called I remember when. It's looking back on the past and talking about it now in your end as if it's already changed. I remember when I used to be fat. I remember when I didn't have guys all over me. I remember when I didn't have a huge Instagram following, a huge TikTok following. That's me because I only joined last week. <laughs> um, how many times should we affirm during the day? Right, so, oh, my sister's accessory and clothing brand is Manifest. Oh, that's so cool. What a great name. I bet you she's doing really well. Does it say it on the, the like the T-shirts and stuff? That would be wicked. And a hoodie. I'd love a hoodie with a manifest on it. That would be wicked. Um, how many times should we film during the day? Right. So affirmation schedules, you don't have to have one, but I thoroughly recommend you do it when you wake up in the morning first thing and as you're falling asleep because that's when your subconscious mind, you're kind of half sleepy. It's what Neville calls the state akin to sleep, the most like sleep state you can be in. It's kind of meditative. It's not meditation, but it's just the state you're in. You're kind of drowsy. Okay, so as you're waking up, you open your eyes, don't check your phone. Just think, I am the most lovable girl in the world. Once you've met me, you love me and you cannot be without me. I am a powerful manifester. I get whatever the fuck I want. Everyone is mesmerized by me. Whatever your thoughts are, whatever your affirmations are, think them in the morning. Then do it as you're going to bed at night. Then when you have a spare moment in the day, do it. Washing the dishes, having a shower, going for a run, swimming, whatever you're doing. Then... If you really want to get strict on it, you can set a schedule, okay, in your phone, in your reminders, every hour on the hour for like nine hours and do different lots for five minutes. And the most important thing is to replace your negative thoughts all day long with your affirmations that are positive because that's your inner conversations and that's the shit that kills it. You can affirm all day and then when you start thinking shit that's negative or against your affirmation, it'll shit on your affirmations. You've got to change your thoughts during the day. How should I manifest my career? I'm still young, but I don't know what to do as an adult. Don't worry about it. Lots of adults still don't know what they want to do. Most of them don't. Most of them just fall into careers. So just manifest that you love your career. Uh, sorry, just affirm that you love your career. I love going to my job every day. My job makes me so fucking happy. I have my dream career. Okay, you could affirm that because you don't know what it is yet. And also, think about what it is you like. I used to teach and I used to say to kids, what is it you like to do? And they'd be like, oh, I like fashion, I like this. I'd be like, we'll do that. And they'd be like, but I can't do what I like. You go, yes, you fucking can. What method should I use to manifest to grow taller? Oh, we'll just, uh, you can imagine looking down on people, okay, visualizing. You can imagine people telling you that you look taller. You can imagine people commenting about how you're towering over them telephone technique or them looking at you and making a comment you could also just imagine your height so look in the mirror and just imagine yourself growing use visualization like see yourself your height growing okay and affirm I am so tall I love how tall I am oh look how tall I am I love how tall I am I am so incredibly tall okay because you can do that I made my hair go wavy so you can do whatever you want um who oh, have I missed any questions ask me any manifestation question guys anything you're having trouble with anything you're trying to manifest ask me a question uh let me see oh whoops i'm trying to work out any questions that i've missed can i it, manifest it happening soon yes um if you want things to move faster say it's happening now um i have my affirmation straight away my affirmations come hella fast Okay, my SP and I are together. Say their name, don't say SP. So many people say SP, and it's like your brain's going, Who the fuck's that? You know, Johnny and I are together now. We're married now. Okay, do things now. Of course, we're married now. When we got married yesterday, that was so much fun. Okay, try and make things in the now because your subconscious doesn't know the difference between the past, the now, and the future. It has no idea. I was saying before in the last live that I did a past life regression therapy years ago. And I went into my past and then I went into my fucking future 
and I was crying my eyes out in some of the scenarios I was in, some of the places I was in, my subconscious thought I was really there at my mother's graveside on a stage, blah, 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 getting a prize. I felt as if I was really there because my subconscious was like, oh, my God, we're at the grave, and I was bawling my eyes out. Your subconscious doesn't know the difference. That's why you can wake up from a dream crying or screaming because it thinks it's real. Everything you tell your subconscious, it takes as truth. How should I manifest my specific person if he doesn't use social media to reach out? Why do you need social media? Doesn't he have a phone? Is that the only way you're in contact or can be in contact? Um, he could call you. He could text you. He could send a carrier pigeon. People will find people. Okay, don't worry about the how. If you want to be with him or her, you said him, um, assume you're together already now. Don't worry about how it's going to come about. That's you worrying about the how and that's you messing it up. Just don't worry about how it's going to happen. Or you can imagine that he texts you and you see a text. You can imagine he joins social media and he starts messaging you and following you and looking at your stories. Should I just reply to his text but not be the first to talk? During my the time I'm manifesting and affirming, should I refrain from contacting my SP first? Yes. Should I just reply to his text and not be the first to talk? As a girl, sorry I've got to say, to be in feminine energy, let the guy lead. I know this isn't manifestation stuff, but it kind of is because you want to be on a pedestal and you want them to treat you like a queen. And that is your self-concept. You want people to treat you beautifully like I affirm my SP to do. And he does. Um, when I put myself first and affirm for him, he just like that text come back or should I do something? I don't not understand that question, darling. Write that again. Um, and should you just reply to his text but not be the first to talk? Look, if you feel confident in texting someone, text them. But honestly, I don't recommend it because if you're coming from a place of rejection and you're worried they'll reject you, I would not do it. Because what you're imagining will outpicture, not the text. Action doesn't mean anything. Guys, everyone's asking me about things they should do. You shouldn't be doing anything to make your manifestation come about in the 3D world. You should be doing it in your mind, only in your mind. I know this sounds really odd, but when I wanted my SP, I didn't go around walking up and down the street looking for a guy to turn up. I just affirmed I want a man who treats me beautifully, and a week later he was outside my house. I'm new at my school, and I want to join a certain friend group, but I don't know how... Can I manifest to join? Oh, okay. You could visualize yourself sitting at lunch with those friends. You could visualize them laughing at a joke you told, okay? You could visualize sitting on the phone with one of those friends chatting or um, sitting on social media talking, okay? You could visualize that. You could also affirm, I love my new friend group. Everyone loves me. All my friends, my new friends love me. All my new friends love me, Okay? You don't need to do anything to make it so. Just affirm in your mind that those girls or that group of people love you already. And if you start walking with that confidence that those people and everyone around you, everyone, affirm everyone's your friend. Everyone wants to be your friend. I am so wonderful that everyone wants to be my friend. I am so lovable that everyone wants to be my friend and I can choose which friends I have. Okay, affirm those things. Does manifesting only work if you script or can you manifest without scripting? I don't script. I mean, I have a journal where I do write stuff occasionally, but I kind of stopped. I definitely wrote down what my car ended up being and I forgot I'd even written it down until after I got the car and then I found what I'd written down. It was exactly what my car was. Um, but guys, people are on here obsessed with 369 and scripting. You can script all you like, but if you're going... Um, John and I are happily married, 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 John. After a while, if you're writing it and writing it, first your hand will hurt, second, you'll be thinking, what am I having for dinner? Gee, my stomach's rumbling. God, John was an asshole last time I spoke to him. You're not actually thinking it in your mind. Writing it down is writing it down. You have to be thinking it whilst writing it. If you're just randomly writing shit and not thinking while you're writing it down, you're not impressing your subconscious mind, which is the point. Okay, so this obsession with scripting is a little extreme because it means that you're writing, you're not thinking. As long as you're thinking while you're writing, you're thinking the thing you're writing, it's fine. But if you're not thinking the thing you're writing and you're just writing and writing and writing and writing and writing and writing, and writing it's going to do fucking nothing. When I put myself first and affirm, when I put myself first and affirm he loved me, he's obsessed with me, and then he'll just text me. Yeah, right. 
So building up your self-concept, people start treating you better. They'll start treating you how you say they will. If you say, everyone's going to treat you like a queen, I am a little princess and everyone's going to treat me like that, they fucking will start doing it. And I mean the guy at the petrol station. I mean the people serving, giving you Uber Eats. I mean the people at your work. Everyone will do it, not just your SP. Letting go is a massive way in helping your... No, 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 no. Letting go is a massive way to help your manifestation come true. No, it's not. Do you have any tips on that? My tip is letting go is bullshit, okay? So you've probably learned from Law of Attraction. Lots of people are coming here from Law of Attraction world. We are imagining that you have to allow and let the universe take care of whatever it is. Now, you don't worry about the how. That's the letting go, I guess. Let go, let go of how it's going to come about. You let go of resistance that you have against anything you think you're manifesting. But you do not let go of your new story. So let me explain this so you guys can understand why letting go doesn't work. I'm 43, okay? I've got 43 years of shit in my head that I've been thinking subconsciously without me realizing it that's been out picturing in my mind. My body isn't beautiful. My career isn't what it should be. I'm not good enough to have an acting career because I'm not beautiful enough. Or whatever thoughts, these shitty fucking thoughts that I had running through my mind. I even had things like, your career won't kick off to you in your 40s. People told me that and so I believed it. Just stuff like that. It was just in my mind, in my mind, in my mind. Okay? That outpictured in my reality so much that I ended up in therapy. Because my life wasn't going where I wanted and that's how I ended up learning more about manifesting after therapy because I was so desperate to find out why therapy hadn't even worked for me properly, okay? What I'm trying to say is you've got all these negative thoughts in your mind and mostly the negative, I'm sorry, but they really are. You've got 70,000 thoughts a day. Just imagine how many of those aren't very nice about yourself, what you're telling yourself. To re-impress your subconscious mind with new thoughts, you have to think about that shit a lot. You have to affirm all the time as much as you can, to get rid of that shit if you really have that ingrained negative shit in there. So letting go of the idea of what you want, are you telling me that while you're letting go of it, you're not thinking bad thoughts still about it? So this is why letting go doesn't work. If you want your SP back and you go, we are happily married, we're happily married, okay. And then all day you're thinking, where is he? Oh, if only we were happily married. I wish we were happily married. Why has he fucking called me? You're just going back to your old thoughts, which is what caused the breakup in the first place. Do you understand? You have to re-impress your subconscious mind and hold on to that new vision of what you want. You have to live in the end, as Neville said, in the end of your new reality. You're creating your, your outside reality all the time with your mind. Now you're stepping into a new reality, so that will be out pictured in your reality. You're stepping into the person you want to be, the person who's married the person who's got a successful career. You're in there in your mind and then it eventually it will outpicture. Your 3D, guys, is a, is a slow-moving culmination of your assumptions, okay? Everything that's outside of your reality, in your reality right now, outside in your eyes that you can see, you created with your old subconscious thoughts. To change it, you need to change those subconscious thoughts so new things outpicture into the 3D. The 3D is dead, you can change it by changing your thoughts, but you can't change your thoughts if you let go and you're concentrating on changing the fucking subconscious thoughts. Does that make sense? Have I made sense on not letting go? Let me know. Sometimes when I strongly believe something will happen, like a text from someone, it doesn't. I don't know why. You strongly believe, you strongly believe, but somewhere, somehow, you have a doubt. Okay? Most of the time when shit isn't happening, there's doubt there. Oh, it made sense? Okay, good. So, guys, I'm trying to veer you away from law of attraction, even though, you know, some people say it works for them and all power to you. But it's it's very unempowering law of attraction because, and I don't even think it exists, but I don't think you're attracting anything. Um, you're just picturing shit in your mind and out pictures, right? That's it. The problem with law of attraction teachings are they're very, very, very restrictive in that, Everything is outside of you making decisions for you. No. I want you to realize that you created everything in your world so far and therefore you can recreate it and change it and have exactly what the fuck you want and you're not relying on the goddamn universe, which, by the way, is just air. It's atmosphere. I don't know how atmosphere is doing shit for you. When people talk about the universe, I'm like, what? You're doing it. You're doing it. 
not the universe, nothing outside of you is doing anything for you. Once you think it and you live in the end, people start moving in your universe. People start moving in your reality to make it so. Other people bring you your shit. But this space world, this globe, this air doesn't do shit for you. When I manifest a lottery win, do I have to think how much I want to win? Sure. But also affirm you just have money. Guys, I was saying this before. You don't have to... Think of how you're going to get the money. You just have to assume you have the money. Don't worry about the how. You can have a massive car accident tomorrow and get $20,000. Not that I'm saying to do that, but there's different ways that money comes to you. Someone could die. You get a huge promotion at work. You know what I mean? Like Bitcoin could go up if you own Bitcoin, and it is. You know, like shit could happen, different things could happen. Don't just rely on one source of getting what you want where you want it like think if you think like say for an sp you think oh they have to text me for us to get back together well maybe one day they'll call you maybe one day they'll turn up at your house but if you're concentrating on the text and then you, you're kind of killing the how you see you don't know how it's going to happen uh any more questions oh there's eight got people here hi guys um blah blah, blah. so I'm, I'm not going to stay in here forever because i've got to have some dinner but um and i've got to take my dog for a walk before it goes dark but I will go live this Sunday, 6 p.m. EST. So Australian time, that is um, 7 a.m. in the morning on Monday, Perth time, and 9 a.m. Sydney time. Uh, Los Angeles time, that would be, I think, 4 p.m. Is it two hours behind? Um, and then I will go live again on Thursdays at 9 p.m. EST. And I'll go randomly live during the week, like I am now, to catch you guys. And if you aren't following me or you haven't seen my videos, please go over to my page, Manifest Live with Loz, and you will see my videos. I've got lots of videos at the moment. I've got a series coming out on how to manifest a text. So if you would like your SP or the person you love to uh, to text you for Valentine's Day, go and watch that series. It starts at 1. It's up at about number 6 now, 7. Okay, and it goes to number 12. There's 12 videos. Then I have a series on how to manifest properly. If you want to get rid of all that law of attraction shit you've learnt that's fucking confusing you, scroll down the page, go down to number one, how to manifest properly and watch the, I think, 12 videos in that series. Or it might be 15. Okay, and it really teaches you the basis of law of assumption and using the power of your subconscious mind to create your reality because you have the power to do this, guys. You're doing it all the time. All right, guys, please do follow me. Join me for the next live. Then you'll know I'm live next and you can ask me more questions and I will see you on Sunday at 6 p.m. EST. Bye, guys. Thanks for joining me. Bye.